Clayton Harris wants to be. The Cook County State's attorney, Kim Fox, will be done, uh, as does former Judge Eileen O'Neill Burke. They sat down with the Trib yesterday. We can talk about that in a second. But first, let me welcome him back to the show. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. I appreciate you being back, and, and you're welcome again before primary day. What do you want to say to people who may not be going out to vote? Well, first and foremost, uh, no matter who you vote for, everyone needs to go out and vote. Uh, a lot of people have suffered and died for this right, and um, if you don't vote, your voice is not being registered. So everyone needs to use their voice to make sure that they have uh, an integral part in our governing body, no and matter it, uh, who they vote for. And it all matters, and that includes your Republicans, uh, because Cook County, whether it's a Democrat-run entity or not, it is, uh, you still need to get off your duff and vote for the person that's going to best represent you. All right, Jay. Uh, hi, Clayton. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, um, I'm super concerned about this teen takeover that happened on Saturday night at Roosevelt and Canal. One uh, one person was killed and one person was injured. Hundreds of uh, teens taking over this area. I heard the the police, you know, the commander said, arrest them all, get them all. And they arrested nine. The question I have for you is the suspect that was arrested was let go um, from police custody without being charged. He's a suspect that killed, he shot and killed one and injured the other. What does, what do you have to say about that? And what does the state's attorney do about these teen takeovers, especially as we're getting into these warmer months? Right. Um, and, and first of all, the suspect. So I have to remember, uh, he's not, you know, convicted of anything. I don't know what the facts of the case are, so why they would not have charged the individual. I don't know uh, um, what's going on. Um, what evidence they have or what other uh, things that they're pursuing. So to speak on why that child or that young person was not charged, I can't uh, do that. What I do know is that we cannot tolerate things like this at all and that there has to be a certainty. People have to understand that there's a certainty in prosecution when people do things like this, that everyone's going to be held accountable for their actions. Uh, this is not going to be tolerated. You know, one thing, and, and maybe this is too, uh, part of your question, Jane, uh, about the summer coming up and, mm -hmm. and the warm weather and, and the convergence of young people, just the people coming downtown and, and, and doing things to enjoy the city. And everyone should uh, be able to enjoy the city. It's a beautiful city. I want everyone to do that. I think everybody does, but we want everyone to do it appropriately. So they need to be, everyone uh, needs to be ready for this convergence onto uh, the city or downtown or whatnot which means we put the re right resources uh, everywhere uh, are correctly. I, I think, again, you know, if people want to come down, even if it's a lot of people, even if it's a lot of people concentrated and they want to come down and have a good time and they're not disrupting or, or, or doing criminal activities, there's no problem. But the folks that will, they need to know that there's a certainty of arrest and prosecution. Well, as you know, Clayton, one of the things that wraps against you was that this would be a continuation of Kim Fox and there would be too many people who ought to be in jail awaiting their day in court who would not be because Kim Fox has adjusted things where a lot of people get back in the street or they're on ankle bracelets and that kind of thing. Where are you on that and how do you separate? Well, I think uh, if we're talking about the no cash bail, um, what's going on, that that has been um, that's been decided. You know, that's an issue that came to and through the Supreme Court here in Illinois. And I believe that they decided it correctly. What we're not going to do is criminalize poverty. But when we talk about safety, and that's what uh, um, this allows us to do, it's the Safety Act, you know, that's going on. You're still able to detain people that would do harm. You're still able to uh, make sure that the correct people are being de detained while they're waiting for their day in court. And I think that that is appropriate, and I think that that's what we need to continue to focus on. Uh, we talked about this uh, briefly our, uh, last time I was on the show, and I appreciate it. Um, but the data has shown that we are actually safer uh, having the, the no cash bail in place and not less safe as some of the narrative was uh, before it was implemented back in September. Well, which data are you, are you referencing? Um, what study are we talking about? I think that they're coming out with a formal report in the next couple of weeks. This is the data that I've been told is coming out that they've shown. So I think we're going to look at, is it going to be from Appleseed? They just released about the, um, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because I want to make sure I'm not. Well, well then we'll wait, for the, we'll wait for the study right. to come out. But in the meantime, um, what I was speaking to more specifically is the idea that I could be uh, uh, charged with a gun crime and be sent home on an ankle monitor uh, Cook County Jail's population has dropped considerably. If people feel that too many brown and black people had been locked up 
and we were doing the job of getting people out of jail who shouldn't have been held so long before their day in court came up. What about the idea that a gun crime should have a harsher penalty, meaning prior to judgment in court, the penalty is you've been charged with a gun crime, you're going to stay in jail? Yeah, it depends on what gun crime. But, yeah, I agree. If you're committing a crime with a gun, absolutely. And those are uh, designated and delineated uh, as far as being able to move for a detention hearing. If you're doing something in your possession, in possession of a gun, there's a difference there. So just have to look at the charges on when you say a gun crime, what we're talking about here. But I think that any crime committed with a gun uh, right there, we have to uh, take seriously and prosecute aggressively uh, for sure. But these are uh, those are the types of crimes that are detainable. And but wouldn't that be wouldn't, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be all gun crimes? I mean, all gun crimes. You're saying all gun crimes aren't detainable. I'm, I'm confused. Well, if you uh, have a firearm and your FOIA card is expired. Yeah, well, that's, 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 that, that shouldn't well, be. That's a gun crime. Right. That's yeah. all I'm saying is. I, uh, there, okay, but we're, but we're, in, we're a gun used in the commission of a crime, you're saying they should stay in jail. If it's used, correct. Yeah, if, Those are detainable. Those are right. detainable. Yes. Um, remind me where we are with the level from a misdemeanor to a felony on shoplifting. Kim Fox had raised it. To a thousand dollars from three hundred, are you keeping it at a thousand, or will you go to three hundred? So the threshold uh, that is currently used is an automatic felony is at a thousand dollars, and that's why I want to be clear: we're going to keep the threshold at an automatic felony at a thousand dollars. It does not mean that it can't be a felony below a thousand dollars, but if it's automatic, and you're asking me the threshold that we're going to keep, we're going to keep the threshold at an automatic felony at a thousand dollars. And what do you say to the we will prosecute? Uh, I'm sorry, what do you say to the merchants and the folks that are having problems constantly with shoplifters? We're still prosecuting people under $1,000. Uh, and the difference between the misdemeanor prosecution and the felony prosecution is one day. You can get up to 364 days incarcerated uh, for misdemeanor and it's 365 for a felony. We can still charge people, though, especially recidivists, right, uh, that have done this multiple times. We can still charge them with the felony. I'm just saying that the threshold for an automatic felony charge is going to be at $1,000. All right. Uh, we got less than a minute here. I want to invite you back before the 19th, and hopefully you can come in studio because we yes. always have more time that way. But Please in the meantime, what do you want? I'm giving you a minute here. What's the? What do you want to address with people, the biggest uh, misnomer about you uh, that you think is maybe unfair or just wrong? I think that people uh, may believe that we're not going to take crime seriously. I've told people from day one that we hold everybody accountable for their actions, but we hold everybody accountable appropriately. So I appreciate the question about gun crimes, because on its face, if I say we're not going to detain everyone on gun crimes, people are like, see, he's not going to hold everyone accountable. What I'm telling everyone is you want someone who can discern the difference between a crime committed with a gun and a crime that occurs and someone has a gun. There are two different things there. So you want your next state's attorney to be able to discern that. We still hold everybody accountable. The other thing is, because this is the one knock that uh, people have on me is on the $1,000 threshold. And I appreciate you asking me that question. I just remind people, what I'm telling you is the threshold for an automatic felony is $1,000. It does not mean below $1,000 we can't and or won't charge someone with a felony. We're going to look at the, the allegations that are there, and we charge and move forward to, with everyone appropriately on those um, charges. I, I understand you can only uh, work with the laws that you have on the books. Having said that, that to me is a gray area if I'm a kid and I want to steal something. It shouldn't be uh, because there's going to be a certainty of prosecution. So if you're a kid, you want to steal something, you're going to be held accountable for your actions, no matter what it is, no matter if it's $1,000, $900, $300, or five. So you've got you, you got to staff up to be able to handle that, is, uh, and that's part of a larger discussion that we you said that's a goal previously and the last time around to uh, have a full staff at the state's attorney's office again. So let's get your schedules together with yeah. Tom Hush, and we'll figure out when you can come back. It would be my pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. That's Clayton, Clayton Harris. And if people want to follow your Thanks, campaign everybody. website or how they uh, get more info, where do they go? ClaytonHarrisForCook.com. ClaytonHarrisForCook.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you.